Okay. Hello. Hi. My name is Evita Hollis, and I work for General Electric, and um, I'm part of the knowledge sharing team there. I support the wiki. So I want to kind of give a, a, a overview of our team and what we offer for GE. We, we actually offered this, our service, our knowledge management service internally to all of our businesses, um, but we are starting now doing external services as well. So I'll go over a brief overview of our team, then talk about our wiki, we call it GE Wiki, and our foundation behind it, which is our governance, is very strong and kind of developing and ensuring that our wiki grows and improves and is very useful. And then I'll talk about some of the media wiki. Um, our main extension that we use is the page forms and uh, some of the properties and things that we use. So starting off really quick, here's our team dynamics. Um, most, of, most of us uh, are in Niskan Union, New York. Well. So it's four of us there. Like I said, I manage the wiki, but my other counterparts that help me with the wiki is Michael Alabastro. He's our technical person. So for me, I'm not a technical person. I don't do all of the installing and extensions and things like that. I manage the project. So I do in, on wiki type of things. So I use the extensions. I just don't implement them. Um, we have a wiki as a service team. So they do a lot of the in wiki as well type of things. Again, they are not technical. We're really just developing the content and, and putting the content in the wiki. Um, we have it, ex we do use SharePoint a lot. So a lot of people are against SharePoint, <laughs> but we rely on SharePoint a lot. So we have a, a lot of support. We have three uh, contract developers that help us with the SharePoint. So we'll, I'll show you how we use SharePoint and how we use MediaWiki and how we integrate them together. Um, and then Mark, just, he, you're not up here, your picture's not, but he's our main wiki developer. He helps us with all of the extensions, so when I go out and find something, I hit him up and he actually helps me to put it in our wiki. We also have a, a research services group who's part of our knowledge sharing team. Um, a lot of their, what they do is just for journals, technical papers, ex export control type of documents. They're part of our team as well, um, so they help with that. So tar start talking about our program itself, like I said, we use SharePoint. So SharePoint is our main focus when we want to have our people-to-people -people type of collaboration. So it's really connecting the people to the uh, other people. Um, it's real-time collaboration. So we have a lot of features on our SharePoint that are custom developed by our SharePoint uh, developers. And uh, here are some highlights of some of them, like I ask and discuss. We know that the wiki has a talk, but the, our SharePoint Ask and Discuss is way more robust where they can tag their expertise and based on those expertise, the right people will get alerted. Um, it's, it's, they have daily alerts where anytime a new uh, discussion comes up, you can set your alerts to give them immediately, daily, monthly. You also have sister, connect, uh, sister sharing where we have multiple communities. So you can say, here's a post, but I want to share with another community. So SharePoint really helped us a lot with our discussions. Uh, we have our Discover Connect. Is that's another way that Discover Connect is really just people can go out and find other people who they need to connect with. So if you have a question and you may want us to see who else is working on this or what are they doing, we use SharePoint to kind of put all that information in. Um, our Mentor Connect is just what that sounds like. We have our mentees and our mentors. They can kind of go out. It's a whole process of finding and identifying the right person. So again, all of this is on SharePoint. So it's it's really what we use for our knowledge sharing, where it's real time collaboration, connecting people. For Media Wiki, this is our wiki, our enterprise wiki. It's one global wiki, so throughout GE, uh, our wiki, GE wiki is used for all of the businesses. Um, it's where we actually connect people to the knowledge. So it's real structured type of content there. Um, we actually turned off the ability to upload documents. So the only thing that you can upload is an image because we want you to structure that content and not just put in a lot of PDFs and Word documents and things like that. Um, if you do have something that really is not suitable for the wiki, we, in our SharePoint community, you can upload it. And uh, in SharePoint, you can also you know, restrict who can access it. Where in the wiki, if you upload a document, we can't. So that's another way that we use SharePoint as well. <coughs> Some of the things that we have for our media wiki is, like I said, is wiki as a service. One of the barriers for the wiki is, I don't want to learn how to use it. It takes too much time to try to do it. So we cut that barrier out and we say, hey, submit us something. We have a team that can convert it to a wiki document. Use your Word, uh, Microsoft Word if you want, and they send it to us and we do it. We also have use our wiki as a service where a lot of sites are decommissioned. So there's a lot of different platforms across GE. So if they want to say, hey, this is a wiki, Confluence, sometimes I use Confluence, 
GE has other uh, in-house developed platforms that we're closing down and we're moving all of that to our wiki. Lessons learned. Lessons learned is like the big thing within GE and I hope maybe you guys are familiar with it. Just capturing those, you know, lessons learned and then what do you do once you actually captured it and who's reviewing it and things like that. I'll go into a little bit more. This is one of the things that we do a lot with the page form and semantics and approved revs to kind of have a robust workflow for the lessons learned. So all together with SharePoint and MediaWiki, it develops our, uh, what we call GE communities. Um, the other two things, because we do have a lot of integration with it. So for our ask and discuss, you know, we can, you can mark for helpful or close, uh, helpful solution or this close, you know. So we want to capture that into our wiki. So we actually take those ask and discuss threads and migrate, the, migrate that discussion into a structured article. And we have our critical knowledge finder where people can search on the tags, they can search on the topics and find those previously, discuss, previously posted discussions in a more structured way to find those solutions. Um, we have our ident expert identification. Our expert identification is just our taxonomy. So in your community, when you're a new member, you go and they ask you, what are your expertise? And they're already predefined terms. And those terms are used across everything. They're used for your expertise. They're used for the ask and discuss, for the document library, for the wiki categories. It's just one large structure to kind of tag things and keep everything organized. So our governance, like I said, this is the foundation of it. And I'm often called the wiki police. <laughs> Because we monitor we, everything. We have a strict guideline of what goes in our wiki and how it goes in our wiki. Um, every community has a moderator, at least one. Most of them have three. Um, some of them have eight. The moderators help us with this. We have a guideline of what goes in the wiki, but then also what should you should link to the wiki and what's just completely not wiki appropriate at all. Um, so this is the first thing that we send our users to when they're trying to create content. How we find is our category. This is what I was talking about, our taxonomy. There's a lot of different type of tags that we use in our wiki. Our most important that we use for our user is our taxonomy. So that when we have new communities, the first thing that they do is develop a robust and thorough taxonomy. Um, and so they require all of their users to tag their content with some of those taxonomies. Now, we do use the categories for other different things because they may look for content types. They may be looking for, so since we have one wiki, we have to figure out a way of how to have a simplified approach for different communities that use the same terms. So I may have five communities that say, okay, I want to use uh, application lifecycle management. Well, we need one parent one to list everything, but then ha have one to say only this community content is here, co community two content is here. So we use this kind of robust way of tagging content. Our moderators, like I mentioned, every community has one. Um, they play a very important role in our wiki governance to make sure that the content is organized. So when a new article is created, the first thing they have to do is tag it. Um, if they follow the correct process, and a lot of our users don't know how to actually go and create an article by themselves and add a category, so that's good. So we've created using forms. Here's how you create page. Here's the, they, we actually restrict them to using the terms that we have. They can't create terms on their own. So once they create that page and tag it, the moderators are responsible to go out Look at those articles, make sure they're correctly tagged, titled, and things like that. Um, if someone does happen to you know, move around our process and create a page that's out there, my team actually sees that right away, we, the page triage uh, extension. And we go and contact those editors and say, hey, you need to follow the process and correctly do this. So our moderators continually to review the content as it's been edited. They may not be the subject matter expert, but they're responsible to make sure a subject matter expert is reviewing that. Our data guidelines. So our wiki, again, is a global wiki. There's, uh, we do have some type of security in it that uh, our developer helped us work out. So we use namespace for security. So anything in the main namespace in this GE no classification, that means it's open to everyone within GE. Um, if a, a community has a confidential community, we create a namespace for them. 
um, our namespace defines which community it belongs to and their content. And it's just a namespace that's restricted to that active, active directory group for they have the same edit and read rights as they would in the namespace. It's just that those group of people who can access the page. Um, when they do a search, everybody can see the content, but when they click on it, they go to the permission area if they don't have the right access to it. We do, GE does have another level of confidential, highly uh, confidential, because that's more of the expert control and things like that. We do not allow any of that type of content in our wiki. Okay, so talking about how we use page form and semantics. So, like I said, our wiki is very heavily built on page forms, okay? Pretty much everything in there is, uses a page form. Our portal is the first access point to any content. So every community has a portal page. Um, on their SharePoint site, it will say your GE Wiki portal. When you link to it, it comes here. This portal is predefined, so every portal has the exact same look and feel. So it doesn't matter which community you're from, or if you're a member of multiple communities, you don't have to get confused on where things are at because it's too many different layouts. So every portal has the exact same layout. The actually only thing that someone can actually change are the buttons at the top. They can put helpful links. Everything else is semantically built. Um, so when we create their taxonomy, this is automatically populated based on the semantic property. So we say, here's your topics. And then once you create an article, this page updates and have, lists that article based on the tag that they created. So this is a way for them to come and quickly browse for content. When they want to create a page, this is the way that we ask them to create a page. They put in the title here, create the page, it opens a page form, and this is how we restrict them to the taxonomy terms, where you pick your community, and then want, based on your community, your subtopics and your topics with using uh, semantic page forms will update. So unless they know how to go and use the search bar and create the page and uh, do it themselves, they may not use the proper process, but pretty much 95% of our users don't know how to do that, so we don't tell them. <laughs> and so again, our taxonomy is basically auto-populated here. For our lessons learned, so lessons learned, within GE there was a lot of different platforms. Uh, GE Power had a different platform, GE Aviation had a different platform, and they just, everybody complained about all the barriers for lessons learned. So they wanted to come up with one solution that can help multiple businesses within GE. So I started out like looking at what they had and trying to see what they were trying to achieve. Um, and page form, the things with page form is that it didn't have like a lot of uh, workflow into it, things like that. So I kind of like rig it to work. There are ways to break it, but they're not that, smart or user friendly to break it much because <laughs> they don't know a wiki. So as long as most of it's, it works fine. So work, come up with a workflow, the different stages. So they want to be able to create a lesson, but they don't want it to be visible right away. So that's where approved revs comes in. So we use approved revs for them to kind of submit it. Um, then we use the category watch. So when they add a category, you're alerting the leaders. I'm not going to go to all of it. I'm just going to hit the big high notes of it. Um, so when they add a category, we use the category watch for the leaders to be alerted the new page is done. They come out, review it, approve it, then they actually, once they say approved, it adds it to another category to go to the different level. So we use the categories a lot and the properties. We try to use the properties, but a prop, sometimes the properties and approved revs kind of don't update quick enough, so we stay with just the categories um, to actually help with our workflow. So this is kind of a, a, a look, snapshot of what it looks like. So when someone submits it, it's in a draft. We use the templates to kind of t to know what stage it is in the workflow. If it's a draft, if it's been released, if it's, if it's not released. Um, change the background. I did a look, we did a little bit with the proof revs, um, adding the, the actual organization versus the user person who actually approved it made some things a little bit, which we did a lot of the CSS to change the style and the look of some of the extensions. Every extension seemed like it has a different style. And, <laughs> and so we, we, what we did a lot of the kind of style in it for the extensions to kind of make them all look the same. 
Um, we used a lot of the properties to define a dashboard because one of the things they wanted to know is where are the lessons learned, the process getting stuck at, at what stage or is it getting stuck at. So we, we tag with all the properties and here you can see which ones are still draft based on the community. I took the community names off. But you can see how long it's taken for them to be reviewed, how long it's taken to them to be approved, and then how long has it taken a lesson to be closed and implemented and things like that. So this uh, here, again, I tried to use like concepts and things to kind of make this dashboard, but the concept wasn't updating a lot, so I had to go back to categories. So I'm, that's one of the limitations with the properties and concept. It doesn't update as quickly. And so, but the category stuff kind of does, so I'm using a lot of the different tags to kind of help with that workflow and dashboard. So other examples of page forms. So this is where the critical knowledge finder. Um, so basically, when a discussion is closed and marked as re resolved, we have our wiki as a service team actually move that to the wiki. They do that manually, move it to the wiki, because they curate it. They actually create an article and make it a structured article versus looking like a conversation. It needs to be like a, you know, an article. So we kind of actually curate that and make it clean. Um, so this is kind of like the, what they, the user interface, what they will see, they can search on the community, the taxonomy, and keywords, we're using um, the form, uh, a lot of the results format to kind of do this, where the word cloud is clickable, so if they can click on that and they'll update your results. Um, it shows you the question, it shows you who submitted it, what community they submitted it, and what tags. So they can also, um, you know, go through and search based on just the tags if they see one that's close to it. Um, this is, we did tips, so a lot of our groups have, they use Yammer a lot to post tips, but they hated Yammer because they couldn't find the tips later, so we actually migrated a lot of the tips from Yammer into the wiki, so we created a whole new, a namespace for just for tips because it's not really an article, so we wanted to keep it separate. So we have the tips, they wanted to be able to comment it, so we just pretty much iframe the discussion page onto the tip page instead of having them click on the discussion tab. Um, and then this, this is the main index page where we have where we can show the most uh, recent tip and use it. So all this is with semantic to kind of populate it. Our university pages, so a lot of all of our groups, most of our communities have a lot of training. So we have our university pages where they can create the articles and they can tag it based on who is the target audience, um, what are the uh, topics, uh, at what stage in your career you should use that training, and they can actually filter based on all of that information to kind of filter down using semantic to see which one they should be looking at. We have the videos. The videos are, we actually just put them in our community site because if the videos are restricted, they won't be able to access, only the people who should have access to those videos can see it. So that's where our community library comes in. If I'm any, any questions you guys can stop me. I'm just going through of how we're using the page forms and things like that. Um, so those, we have a lot, I had a lot more examples, but I didn't want to just put everything up here and keep going. Because again, like I said, we use page forms for a lot. I want to talk about some of the things, our next steps um, for our team, our in-house development team. Um, so here's some of the things that we wanted to work on to improve the user experience with some of the things we have. Um, Automatic workflow reminder. So basically, I've tried a lot of different extensions, haven't found that great one yet. So we're actually developing our own way to have those alerts. Um, integrating with the company directory. So you know, with page forms, it would be great if there was a way to say, here are all of the users, and it can just have that drop down to put the users in there. But we can't do that yet. So we're trying to see if we can just integrate it with our directory and have those users already there. Um, and then we're thinking about how we can allow highly confidential content. And we're just brainstorming here, maybe creating a wiki form and having that, uh, those wikis cut off and then have one central user interface where they can search and all the content will show up and they'll direct them to the right wiki based on what they click on. Um, for the semantic development, so I, I didn't have a, I wanted to put it all on one slide but I have a whole lot more things that I wanted to, to do. So I just put some of the high notes. And again, some of these may work in an extension that I don't know, but we've tried different extensions and we just haven't found that great thing that help us uh, to accomplish what we're trying to do. So um, just one of the things is the load time for semantic, because we do use a lot of page forms and they're, sometimes they're, wrong, they're really long. It loads, it takes a long time to load and then it crashes if somebody tries to select something. So these are just like little improvements that I'm hoping 
I'm pushing it out here to all of our developers to kind of help me with. <laughs> and that's pretty much us in a nutshell. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> um, Uh, yeah. So you mentioned that you prevent users from uploading files other than images to the wiki. I'm guessing that you allow them to upload them to SharePoint. Mm -hmm. um, do you do any kind of metrics or research to determine like if people are abusing that and just stuffing stuff into SharePoint versus wikifying it? No, we don't. We don't do the metrics to see if they abuse it. We do do the metrics to see what's being uploaded. So Michael, our technical, he does do the metric. We have like a dashboard of how much of their documents being uploaded, what type of documents and things like that. But one of our things for the Wiki as a service team, they go and look at those documents and determine what should be moved over to the Wiki. And it's not like, it's something that that's on their daily thing that they try to go to, here's a community, we're gonna go and do a health check. So they do it like annually, do a health check, and they look and see which documents should be moved to the Wiki and out of the community library. Okay, thanks. And then uh, in your rings slide, um, showing the SharePoint and, and the wiki, can, can you walk through an example of some, one, one employee trying to search for a subject matter expert uh, and, and explain what the wiki provides and what SharePoint provides in that use case? So explain a little bit, like if they're trying to search for what? Uh, let's see, advance it one more. I think you had a couple of circles combining the rings. Yeah, expertise identification, I think. Does that mean like if someone's searching for another employee with NGE that's a, an expert on some subject and you can connect them, I think you mentioned that SharePoint is basically used to get them connected, but yeah. does the wiki provide any part of that also or is it just in the no, SharePoint? No, no. So they will use Discover Connect to find it and then what happens is a pop-up will show and say this is how much, this, these are the documents, these are the wiki articles, these are the discussions. So it will have a pop-up to show you everything that's related to either that person or that term. And then they can click on it. So the wiki is just integrated because it pulls those expertise tags to the Discover Connect for the wiki articles. Does that, does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> I didn't really have a, a question, but more of a comment that uh, I've been impressed with how much Evita has done in the past three years just with semantic media wiki and, and page forms and everything. Just how much of a, a huge workflow she's built and, and done here. And it's, it's pretty amazing and only had my help with the PHP, so. Thank you. <laughs> While I'm walking over Brian, I'll just say on your last slide, I saw something about VE with page, visual editor with page forms, which exists. Okay, it exists. <laughs> Yeah, I just had a question about, I think it was under the umbrella of wiki as a service, but the idea where you can send content out and someone else would kind of wikify it. Mm -hmm. um, how does that work exactly? And, um, you know, do they go through and try to find links that are appropriate? And who gets the attribution for that content that's added? So when, so we have a link on our wiki on our hand on the toolbar and it just says we get the service so it opens a page form and what they do is they tell us the category the community who's the author and they give us a link to either the document the site or whatever our team wikifies it and we put in there here's the, at the bottom it's always here's the author of it because it does show in our history that our team is doing it but we always have to make sure we put who's the author and things like that and so we use that in our data to see how many contributors we have because even though they have not edited the wiki they are a contributor um, and so that's what we do for that. I yeah. saw a Wikithon listed somewhere. Does that mean you have in-person editing events? Are they remote? Are they clock? Yeah, so when we do the Wikithons, they're mostly, sometimes they're remote. If I can go to them locally, I'll go, but mostly they're remote. But I just do a, a introduction and show them and do editing. But I try to find a, what we call a power user local and the power user will go and attend the Wikithon with them. And it's, it's mostly like a half day thing where they come in, the leaders define what articles they should be working on and they have all the subject matter experts come in and create those. So we, we use Skype a lot and kind of do those Wikithons. I know um, I saw on one of your ending slides that you want to link your Active Directory, but currently with this amount of users and communities, how do you control 
um, the user access. Who, when someone leaves a company, moves to another community, leaves your company entirely, how are you controlling login? All that. It is, it is controlled via Active Directory. It does try in. Sorry. <sighs> So uh, GE has implemented um, single sign-on with Active Directory, and it reads groups from there and everything. So that's how all the access is done. I actually really love the slide and the insight in that. Um, you, you said that you the that the users are using Yammer and SharePoint for the real-time people-to-people collaboration and not the wiki. And it's true, I mean, the wiki is terrible on that. Could you, could you pinpoint which features you would like the wiki to have in order to move a little bit more from the blue to the green, if possible? Um. Right now, not none. I think the blue works well with what the blue is doing in the green. The only other thing that, I, that I've seen out there that we would like to have is the multiple editors at the same time and avoid the editing conflict and things like that. And I know that was an extension out there, but I, I think we had issues with trying to get it to work well. Um, but I am not against SharePoint. I love SharePoint. I think SharePoint is strong in what it does. Um, some of the things that the wiki can do that SharePoint can do better and some things that the we, the SharePoint can do, but the Wiki can do better. So we're just trying to find that balance. We're not trying to get rid of either one. Okay. So just a quick question for your moderators and your Wiki service. How much of that person's day is dedicated to Wiki and doing that maintenance? Or is that a full-time, those people are dedicated to 100% Wiki? Yeah, we have two full-time uh, people for the Wiki as a service, and then we have Backup support for their uh, for our research group, so that anytime we have too much, they come over and help us with the wiki as a service. Um, but yeah, so we do have full two. So we have two full time support and two full time employees, which is myself and one other employee. Mm -hmm. I saw um, in just in regards to comparing SharePoint versus MediaWiki, I saw that. On one slide, there were about three developers dedicated to SharePoint and one developer dedicated to MediaWiki. Is that just an uh, indication of their relative workload, or is that, uh, in my cynical view, is that, a, is that an indication of the amount of developers it takes to do the same work? I would say that when you look at the developers, you have to look at our support. It's one developer, but we have four full-time support people, where SharePoint just has three developers. So it's more, we, we do a lot on the wiki, um, where SharePoint develop, they have to actually develop. They, uh, we don't have users who can go in and create things like I can with a page form, or our team can with a page form. So I think that's the difference. Great, great. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you use namespaces to restrict user access to certain information. Mm -hmm. Do you also restrict the ability for semantic properties to be queried across namespaces? Oh my god, that's the one I just, I really want to do that. Do you have something for that? Or maybe no, oh, I okay. want it too. <laughs> <laughs> that's something we really want as well, yes. <laughs> Anything else? What yeah. Prevent. He said it better. Say it again. <laughs> I don't know. So one of the things that we want to prevent is be able to use the semantic. But you know, if you go to a property page, you can see the values. We want to be able to hide that as well. And then prevent people from querying on a property and having results come as well. So that's what we really, really would like. So you do actually Correct. Yeah. I'm just wondering which extension you're using for the namespace-based read restriction, if any. Um, I think that's just something that Mark wrote. Is that what? Lockdown? No, it is Lockdown. Oh. I have a way that they can get into namespaces. It's Lockdown with some stuff Mark wrote. <sighs> okay, cool. Well, I... Th what? There was one. Okay. Right, thank you. I was just going to say that I actually remembered. Cool. So two announcements quickly. Um, first, uh, well, first I'll say the one that's not related to lunch, because once I sell lunch, everybody's going to want to go get lunch, right? So the first announcement was if you go to the conference page, um, at the top under chat, 
It has a link to um, a riot-based chat. If you guys want to, you know, at some conferences, there are associated chat rooms if people want to have some ongoing discussion.